It's raining. <laughs> I know you probably can't see it behind me, but it's raining. I like the rain. I think that uh, a lot of times people get, oh, I don't know, maybe put off by rain or challenged by it, but for me, living in the city, a lot of times rain seems to kind of cleanse everything. It really makes everything smell better. Kind of, for me, feel better. Oh, sure, it's overcast at times, but, you know, something about plants and rainwater, you know, it just seems to be a difference of growing capabilities that whenever plants get rainwater, it seems like it's almost as though they get miracle grow. You know, miracle grow, that stuff that you, you know, mix with water or you buy at the food or uh, gardening store or hay and feed store or Home Depot or something. And, you know, you put in your plants and they grow like crazy. <laughs> you know, it's hard to kill them when they got miracle grow. <laughs> but uh, rainwater seems to do that. You know, there used to be a, a song, Ain't got no rain barrel, ain't got no cellar door, but we'll be jolly friends. There used to be that collection of rainwater. People used to have a rain barrel. And it'd be a big, giant, round, wooden barrel, you know, that was probably, you know, shellacked on the inside with something, you know, tar maybe, or who knows. But houses had some place, you know, where the rain kind of could sloped off of the roofs to the rain barrel. And there, people would use that rain barrel for whatever purposes that they needed it, whether for plants or maybe even for drinking water, you know, possibility. I know that there's been a lot of discussion lately about you know, are we running out of water or not running out of water. And coming from Alaska, it's kind of humorous when I look at glaciers to think of running out of water. But believe it or not, in Alaska, there are lakes up in the farthermost part of the northern tundra of Alaska that have dried up from warming, apparently. And I know people don't like to hear that, but. The world climate is changing in some ways. What's causing it, nobody knows for sure, but there's a lot of argument about why we're having such weird weather. Well, living in the last days, we know why we have weird weather, but the point is, is so what? <laughs> I mean, you could let it make you all wet, or you could adapt to it. You know, you could walk around miserable, you know, from the rain, or you could just sing in the rain, you know. Singing in the rain, I'm singing in the rain. You know, dancing, I'm feeling, I'm happy again. But the choice is always up to you, because once you know you're saved, and that's one of the things that we talked about in some of the principles of life that we are recording, is that in a different Bible study, you know, in a study about life itself, that in Principles of Life we discovered that you have to have a foundation. You have to know in your heart that you are saved. Because if you don't know that, then you're always going to be influenced by some type of fear that's going to somehow cause paralysis in you. If, say, you lose your you know, power because you got hit by a snowstorm or a rainstorm. <gasps> oh no, when's the power going to come on? Oh my God, you know, what's going to happen? You know, you panic or you fear. But the person who's saved really begins to have less of a fear of things that are happening in the world and more of a realization that God is in control. Because no matter what happens, James said we should count it all joy, especially when we fall into diverse or many varieties of trials and tribulations knowing that the working of our faith produces patience, but that patience has its perfect work. And I think sometimes that's where people get mistaken ideas about Christianity, as though bad things don't happen to good people. Sure they do. <laughs> we just handle it better. <laughs> it's like, hey, I would board for catastrophes. I mean, I used to tell people, look, when it comes to being wiped out, I'm used to it. 
<laughs> I changed jobs so many times, no problem. You need a new career? Hell, I'll help you. I'll help you, not hell. <laughs> I'll help you get a new career. I'll train you in some new opportunity. You know, there's there was always a venue that I could always use to go learn something. Whenever I was applying for a new job, I'd go to the library and learn all about it or find out from you know, the experienced people in the business, you know, what that job entailed and what it was involved and I learned all kinds of things, you know, and I think that most people are pretty much adaptable to all of what life has for them because that's kind of the way God made us. Adaptable. We are able to handle a lot more than we think we are. And you know, I like that because I can learn from people that are adaptable that aren't Christians as much as I can learn really from people who are Christians but aren't adaptable. You see, sometimes Christians get kind of stuck in this whole rut where they think only Christian this, that, or the other thing. and They don't realize that people have, and God uses other people for his own purposes. He may not use them for salvation, but he uses them for his own design and purpose to accomplish something in the world. And that's where sometimes I think we need to recognize there's a lot of recorded history in the Old Testament where God was dealing with people who acknowledged his existence, though they did not serve him personally. They recognized that, yes, that's the God of Israel, but that's not my God. And they were honest. You know, they were pretty much straightforward about their perspective. And that's the way you should be, you know, is that you find that different people at different times and different places are going to have different perspectives. They're going to look at things slightly different than you do. You may be young and you may see the world as your oyster, you know, and you just can't wait to dive in the ocean and pry open all the clams to find your precious pearl, you know, your oyster. And then you may be older and you may be sitting back in a rocking chair going, you know, been there, done that. I'm kind of enjoying my life the way it is. <laughs> or you may be in a family where you have so many kids, you don't have time to even think about you know anything else except to go 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 and do do do. You know, and you got to keep up with the kids. You know, because after all, you know you're the one responsible for them. And you're taking care of them, and boy, you just have only a few minutes, you know, to really grab hold of your faith or grab hold of you know something that you know you might need. Well. God knows that. And you see, God understands us better than we understand ourselves. Because a lot of times we don't even admit that we have needs. Whether we be a Christian, a non-Christian, a person that's worldly, or a person that's carnal, or a person that's sensual, or a person that's sexual, or a person that's political. Most people don't recognize that every day, just like plants that need water, just like birds that need to build nests or to be provided for. We all have needs. And at some point in time, God meets that need. He recognizes that because he causes the rain to sh uh, he causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. So it's not like as though, you know, you want to wander around and say, well, you know, I'm this, that, and the other thing and get kind of all prideful. No. You want to be humble. You want to recognize that there but for the grace of God go I. That maybe those people that aren't quite like you and maybe have a different perspective and they may not find Jesus or they may not accept Jesus for salvation. And sadly, and this is tragically, and I mean this more than I can say how humbling this should be to you, maybe they will wind up in hell. You know, And God promised that that will happen to those that don't accept his son. But that doesn't mean you go out and beat someone to death because of that. It means that you humble yourself thankful that God has saved you. And that when a person chooses to reject God or Jesus, that's their choice. They can make that choice freely based upon their own decision-making process. And while it may be a tragedy in our eyes, it's still something that God allows to happen. And you have to accept that fact, or you'll wind up a spiritual proof. You'll wind up getting kind of like, really thinking you're something more than what you are. Saved by mercy and grace, and that's all you are. 
You're saved by the mercy of God and the grace that He's given to you. To forgive you, to redeem you, to bring you to a place of understanding that one day He's going to take you home. Thou shalt call His name Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sins. Yea, know that He was manifested to take away our sins, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto Him, unto God by Him. He was wounded for our transgressions, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Thus it behooved God that Christ should suffer, that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance. Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Your sins are forgiven you by his name's sake. When you recognize that it's just because of Jesus that we have salvation, then we do share that and care for those that don't have that. But at the same time, it's up to the person himself in their own time in their own way, in their own will, to choose what they determine for themselves they want to do with this question of Jesus. Because you see, that's why and that's how we are saved. There's no other way with which a man may be saved except at the name of Jesus and through Jesus' death and atonement that he died for us. He's called us to live with him. But that doesn't mean all recognize him as personal Lord and Savior. Some just recognize the work that he's done. Some just recognize him as a prophet, some as a teacher. The choices that we make determine our relationship with him. God desires for us to have a personal, intimate, walking relationship with Jesus that he might introduce us to the Father. And through that knowledge of the Father and the Son, come into a relationship of personal intimacy and salvation to the redemption of our souls. Maybe not everyone will choose the right way to go. But God still blesses them, and God still uses them, just like He causes the rain to fall on the wicked and the good.